Welcome to Vanderpump Robs, a sexy, unique recap podcast hosted by me, Rob Schulte. And today, Craig Dietrich is joining me once again. You remember I'm him back. from the... Yeah, you are back. You're back, baby. You were on the In Defense of Jack's episode. More on that later. You guest starred on a Winter House episode not too long ago when Molly was out. Yeah. We love having you here. Thank you, Craig. Oh. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's a cold, chilly day in Los Angeles. Uh, it's a good time to talk, to recap on the chilly episodes that you've been re- doing on your show here. It's been an interesting year for Vanderpump Robs. I started getting into the Patreon world, which this episode is great because those of uh, my listeners that aren't patrons are going to get a, a taste. I'm busting some shit out from behind the paywall. <gasps> And, uh, you know, it's like a little gift. It's a gift from me to them. Uh, Hopefully it also entices people to not only pay the $5 to get the BOCO, the bonus content, but also to realize, like, yeah, I enjoy this podcast. Maybe I will give a couple of bucks to help keep the lights on. Because, Craig, as you know, as a podcaster yourself, it truly is a labor of love. <laughs> we talk about that all the time on my podcast. Uh, <laughs> the, the Bachelor, Bachelor Masters. Masters. <laughs> <laughs> about how it is truly a labor of love. We make no money doing it. In fact, we probably lose money somehow doing it. Uh, but hey, people want to know how I could possibly defend Jack. So it's good to... <laughs> get this content beyond the paywall as they say yeah so before we bust open some of these clips i'd like to i'd like to just ask your general thoughts on the state of reality television where are you at with it because you know some friends of mine danny and tiffany they were uh texting me about the love boat reality show and how they got sucked into it but it was like the finale and they still weren't sure how the show really operated because it was you know i don't know my my interpretation is that it was a bit slapdash they even gave up on the theme song about halfway through the series (laughs) and that's like all the love boat is right that, that that's the thread that's tying it together if not it's just a dating show on a boat right well, yes, dating show on a boat. That probably was the elevator pitch. True, true. Um, I don't know. Now there's MILF Manor. Oh yeah, <laughs> that that feels like that feels like a fake show. You know, well what I mean? there that... can't be MILF Island because MILF Island was the fake show on Thirty Rock. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, Shannon from Fluently Forward brought that up. <laughs> God. So what do I think about the state of reality TV? Well, not having the OG Vanderpump Rules cast. I know they got fired for legit reasons and that's, you know, they should, they should have to pay the consequences for their actions, but not having them on the air uh, is a big hit. Mm -hmm. I think to the ecosystem now, see, I'm an OG myself because I, I still stick with cable television. Yeah. Wow. I, I don't have any subscriptions to any, to any, so I don't, I don't get love Island you know, like that people are talking about. So, so my world of reality TV is, is forgetting that a show is on clicking the channels and stumbling on 90 day fiance on, you know, (laughs) what about that channel that like shows a small show in the corner as like the TV guide, like the TV guide channel, right? Like (laughs) rotates. I don't know if that's around anymore. I don't have that on my spectrum, man. Uh, that I pay way too much money for it. I got bundled with my internet. I don't know how much I pay, to be honest. You should, you could, uh, you could do that math uh, and uh, get maybe Paramount Plus <laughs> and internet. I don't know, same yeah. price. Well, as in Bachelor Masters, that's my podcast, Bachelor Masters Lore. Yes. When we started off, uh, Chris, who was one of our co-hosts, he's no longer with us, but he worked for Hulu. Was that a uh, was that a, a dramatic ending that Chris left the pod? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was you know a shock to the system. We lost some listeners when Chris left, uh, wow. but uh, you know we're we're running we're running uh, well now. You know, high gear with EZR and uh, Caitlin and did, myself. Did, did second follow up question here? 
Craig, I'm going to put your feet to the fire. When Chris left, was it a Jerry Maguire situation? <laughs> no, he just he worked for Hulu and I just got too busy. And mm. the great part about it was, is that we got free Hulu. God damn. <laughs> the dream. He, give us, he gave us free Hulu because the original premise of our podcast was that we would hit play on an episode of The Bachelor on Hulu and then podcast while it was playing. Oh, God, that must have been a headache, though. It 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 quickly became you know it quickly became the not not the premise of the show. You didn't you didn't want to do a three hour episode twice a week. <laughs> but our free Hulu subscription persisted, and we yeah. had all the entire package, live <sighs> TV and everything. So for that period of time, I understand what it was like to to be a streamer. But uh, now I'm just. Now I'm just relegated to being, you know, on whatever spectrum can spit out of me. But, you know, there's a lot of good content on broadcast TV. There's The Bachelor shows, of course, sure. which I recap on my podcast, The Bachelor Masters. <laughs> there's the entire Bravo channel. There is Bravo. And, you know, Winter House was good. I always love Summer House. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I can act, aptly state the state <laughs> aptly state the state of reality television for you well it sounds like it's a, it's staying the course right yeah there was no there was no uh you know high highs or low lows uh you know i do have to say you mentioned vanderpump rules you know having to like i'm still a little confused Jax quit before he could get fired, right? That's a very <laughs> like real Jax sort of and situation. It's another, it's another way that I relate to him. Yeah. That's, that's my MO too. Yeah. You can't fire me, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> but Stassi and Kristen obviously got fired. Um, what did Jax get fired for? What was his egregious... Was well, he wrapped so, up in the faith? Yeah, the faith? I think he was just wrapped up in the faith stuff. I'm sure there are other bits and pieces that have to do with it. But like, yeah, I mean, I just spoke with Shannon at Fluently Forward on her, like she released a free episode on her Patreon that was her and I looking into Stassi blind items. And that mm, conversation right. was like over an hour. Like, I think it's also on YouTube um, of us like getting into like the nitty gritty of her and Kristen playing detective and then just being like, here's a woman that stole stuff. And Apparently, Lala at a certain point in time thought that maybe Faith might steal something so she would <laughs> test her. Didn't even go back on the fact that, like, no, Faith didn't steal from her, but the idea that maybe she could have right. is what stuck with them. And then when they got fired for bragging about this and calling the cops on Faith with no evidence, <laughs> right. Um, right. I think Jack's probably saw the writing on the wall and was just like, you know what? I'm out of here. And, right. uh, Brittany, I guess went with him. Hey, if I'm wrong, let me know listeners in the form of a five star review on Apple. Podcasts. <laughs> yeah, right. I love it when people use the five star review on the Apple podcast app as a way of communicating. It's like, yeah. I really loved it when you talked about this on your podcast, as long as it's got five stars, Tell me whatever you want. Um, yeah. Craig. Yes. Should we get into our first clip? Let's hit it. Okay. So uh, one of the most popular Patreon episodes this year was when I had uh, acclaimed TikTok Vanderpump Rules creator Diddy My Dow, better known as Jenna, on to talk about the Miami Girl episode <laughs> of Vanderpump Rules. Now... I'm going to throw to this clip. Here we go. I'm notorious Ooh. for getting impatient. Well, so each clip is just... about four minutes long. Oh, so boy. Just, oh, man. Hey, I offered to send them early, and you said, no, <laughs> fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You see one Anne Marie walking into this restaurant to meet with Dodie Um and meet each other for the first time, which I think is just, it gives me like chills thinking about how unhinged Kristen was at this time in her life. Oh my God. That she orchestrated this, that she even sat down to meet with this woman still blows my mind to this day. And I would even say that this episode 
and Dodie's behavior solidified her as my favorite cast member of all time. So just the very opening scene is just incredible. It is really incredible. It It's wild because you do get to see the automatic contrast between someone who loves the idea of being invited onto a show and being like, I can be a, a character mm-hmm. and someone who is like, got unscripted reality star in their DNA. Yes. Say what you want about the orchestration of all of this. Just seeing both of these two people at the table, you could, Kristen is steering the ship and Anne-Marie is just agreeing all the way. Anne-Marie is at the job interview. Oh yeah, I love doing that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I will I will work, put in however many hours you need. You need overtime? Yeah, I'll of course. also have a giant glass of Pinot Grigio. Yeah. I'll drink exactly what you're drinking. Whatever you need. I'm here. I'm just like you. I am just like you. We both, uh, yeah. we both slept with the same guy. That's the story we're going with, correct? Yes. Um, you just get so much Kristen in this episode and not to, we'll come back to this, but like this scene, then compared to the suck a dick scene at the end Mm -hmm. when like things do not go Kristen's way and she is just chain smoking and pissed that Tom and Ariana got to run off. It's just like, you see every side of Kristen talk about in the middle when she's just sitting in Sheena's recording studio waiting to have a conversation yeah. you get the like the smoldering you get the scheming and you get the angry and no other Kristen exists yes but oh the scheming Kristen the scheming Kristen is mwah, chef's kiss oh, it's so good it's so good now do you think Anne Marie and Sandoval hooked up so I do I I do so I have a whole theory about this. Um, one of the things that I was going to bring up that stuck out to me in this episode um, that actually kind of colors my opinion of the situation is when this opening scene where Anne-Marie says, I think he's still in love with you. To me, I was like, I call bullshit on that. I I don't think Sandoval at that point was still in love with Kristen to the point where he was going to talk all night about her to this random Miami girl. That seemed off to me. However, I do think that they hooked up. I think something happened. Um, and I think that um, Ariana, who is... My, I I have two favorites on Vanderpump Rules. Dodie is my favorite. Like, she's my muse for TikTok. I think she is the, like, best thing that's happened to Bravo ever. And then Ariana is my favorite just because I think she is such a funny, good, like, rational, straight man character for the show. And I just generally want to be her friend. Yeah. But I do think that she and Tom had some sort of um, understanding that something happened between him and Miami girl. They still wanted to be to get together despite it and banded together to ruin that storyline that is my fan theory okay so part of me just doesn't want to believe that sandoval would hook up with Anne marie i I know i don't want to i don't want to believe it but going with your theory that they did right Mm -hmm. i think that it is definitely more important to them that Kristen doesn't get what she wants than uh actively dealing with the Anne Marie thing. Like, I think they're like, okay, we can work mm-hmm. out whatever happened in the other nine months of the year. Yep. The three months we're here dealing with this, like we are not going to get like under Kristen's like editorial thumb for this show. Yeah. That is such a great point because at that specific point in time, you, I mean, you see it throughout season three, you give, Dodie and in, she'll take a mile. Wow. Wow. Those are some deep cuts. I'm telling you, man, there's a lot of quality behind the paywall. 
<laughs> That's why we Ooh. put your clip there, but more on that later. More on that later. So what do you think? Do you remember this Miami Girl episode? Oh, yeah. Of yeah. Course. Classic yeah. VPR. I love the the sitting at the bar having a giant glass of uh, wine <laughs> yeah because <laughs> I, I that's what sticks out to me when I think of the Miami girl episodes and maybe I maybe I'm getting this wrong but it's her it's Miami girl not saying anything and just sort of sitting at the bar because she's had, looking for something else to do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and being like the energy being fed by Kristen yeah <laughs> it's like, like sit there and be angry <laughs> yeah the very beginning of that episode Anne Marie meets Kristen at some West Hollywood restaurant. Um, and although they aren't at the bar, they are at a table and no one else is at this restaurant, which is actually fairly rare for these shows. Usually there's other people eating there. Um, and Kristen, it's like 10 AM and it just keeps ordering bottles of wine. Yeah. And you're right. Essentially dictates what's going to happen. Like gives her, if it was a court of law is like, she would, have many objections from the prosecuting attorney because <laughs> there would be leading of a witness. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, that's right. Day drinking aside. And you know, <laughs> I have a fondness for day drinking. It's one of the <laughs> best memories of my life. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. And do we know what, what has come of Anne Marie? Ooh, I'll do a little Googling right now. Because, you know, she flew all the way across the country, presumably on Kristen Doty's dime, with the expectation that she would become a famous member of the cast, I would assume, right? I, I, mean, I feel like that is <laughs> the hope. Yeah. But you guys had some really good deep analysis there. You know, the just the, the emotion of it, the, the pointing out that Kristen really is the driver of the show. I really appreciated that. You know, there's a time when when Jax is and there's a time when Kristen is and then, then there's a time when Jax is and then there's another time when James Kennedy is, you know, it just, it, it kind of, the ball keeps uh, fumbling from one person to another. Um, you know, Jax famously saying, this is my show or <laughs> yeah. whatever he did. You know, I think Lisa. that was when it was firmly back in his hands. Yeah. But, you know, until she got fired, I think Kristen was, uh, I mean, she, she, that's what made the show so peak reality TV is that, you know, there were these different players all striving to be number one on this on this show that was unlike any other. Yeah. I um in my quick little tertiary Google search, I found a Reddit post where someone recounts something that Ariana put on her Tumblr at Ooh. the time. And it's too long for me to read, but apparently Tom probably didn't hook up with her and yeah. And Marie wanted any excuse to get on the show, be a player in the Bravo universe. And that makes sense. I mean, shit, if, if Kristen Doty were still, let's go with someone who's on the show now, right? If say Peter DM'd me and he was like, Hey Rob, I've got this whole storyline about podcasts and I want you to play along. Peter would never do this, but if he did, I would probably say, I'm game, man. Let's do yeah, it. Let's exactly. take down all podcasts from <laughs> any other person on the show and really showcase yours. I would be there in the heartbeat. Right. Right. Uh, mainly because I am desperate for attention, which is why I have my <laughs> own podcast. Yeah. Isn't that why we all have our own podcast? I'm working on it, Craig. I'm working on myself. I'm working on uh, just being happy. Uh, without the fame of podcasting. <laughs> what do you think she told people like uh, when she sat down on her airplane? You know, when there, there's always, you know, someone's like, oh, where are you going? Yeah, the person it's who like, like taps you on the shoulder when you have headphones on. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, where are you going? Do you think she was like, oh, I'm going to Los Angeles to be on Vanderpump Rules? <laughs> yes, I 100% think if given the opportunity, Anne-Marie would bring up Vanderpump Rules and the guy who asked her, who's like reading a Bill O'Reilly book or something, would right. say like, what's that? And then she would say, reality TV show, and he'd go, I fucking hate that shit. And then yeah. go back to reading his book. Well, Bravo seems to be a network that's always on the airplane TV. Oh, that's true. So she could have been watching Vanderpump Rules to pump herself up to be on the show. <laughs> yeah. And be like, I'm, I'm going to meet her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet her. And then the person <laughs> like, that's great. Can I get my 
I guess they don't serve peanuts anymore. Can I right. get my crackers and coffee? Right. Well, for the record, I do not talk to people on the airplane. I, I have my headphones in. I stare straight ahead. And I do not talk to anyone. Uh, hey, I am also... I've got... I don't talk to people either because... I mean, I guess I'll respond if they talk to me. But no, not even that. <laughs> wow. Good for you. But I will say this. I do abide by some other airplane rules that uh, I picked up on when I was producing Greatest Trek family of podcasts, and we actually went on tours. A, if you are unlucky and have to get stuck in the middle seat, the middle seat gets both armrests. Right. That's a rule. Like, that's just so sorry. If you've got a window or an aisle, you've got way more luxury than that person <laughs> stuck between you. Give yeah. them both armrests. Second rule, and this one's controversial, Craig, and I'd like to know your thoughts on it. Um, don't lean your seat back. Ooh. Because you know, <laughs> the amount of like an inch and a half that you get in reclining that airplane seat is not enough for the amount of, it actually takes up for the person behind you. Wow. That's heavy, man. Yeah. Well, in Europe, they have these ultra low cost air flights. I think, you know, they have them here too with like Allegiant air. Oh, sure. But in Europe, they have Ryanair and these like <laughs> super low cost airlines where the seats don't go back. Yeah. And you're stuck with them, you know, the, the whole flight. Going Fixing up. your I, posture. I, yeah, I can't I can't roll with that one, Rob. I'm sorry. So you're telling me you actually get comfort from the inch and a half yes. of reclining that airplane seat. Yes. Yep, I do. And I don't feel bad for the people behind me because they could recline their seat too. Not always. What if it's <laughs> the last seat? I I I've been in the last seat. I think they recline just uh, a little bit. I, I Besides, know. they should have known better. You know, I, I it's a it's a it's a market economy and you have to be able to go enter that market and know how to get seats that aren't the very last row. That's true. I mean, hell, if there's a reason I don't fly Southwest anymore, I don't like right. to be treated like a cow to get on <laughs> to the plane, uh, but they well, this, all suck and everything yeah. is terrible. So anyway, speaking of terrible, uh, Craig, you were on a Patreon episode of the I podcast. Was. And it was terrible for sure. No. Jax is terrible, but oh. <laughs> you you wanted to defend Jax. Yes. And I found that interesting. Um, now, maybe we can just throw to the clip, and then you can defend your defense. Oh and boy. we can. This is getting so meta. Yeah. But uh, I'm hoping that it intrigues people to go listen to the whole episode because it was, is, and I've, I am on record of saying this, it was an extremely fun thought experiment and i won't give away the ending of the episode because you and i kind of come to terms with something but it it is something that could be done again i think there are right. multiple jacks related episodes that we could do let's let's hear the clip and okay. we'll we'll go from there all right so why is it that people hate jacks and what the conclusion i came to and this is probably what blew your mind if i may <laughs> say so myself <laughs> It's that people see in Jax the problems they have with their own partners. Whoa, yes. That was part of it, for sure. Yeah, I like to pick on Nebraska. So imagine you're in Nebraska and <laughs> you have a partner. Let's call him uh, Max. And Max does things you don't like. Max drinks too much on the weekends. Max is loud and boisterous. He likes to pick fights at bars, even though even if he doesn't necessarily get into fights, he likes to pick them. He may have cheated on you by flirting with another woman. He, you know, I could go on and on with the list, but I think that's what happens is you look at, you look at people and you look at their partners and it's like, oh, I really get I'm so struggling with this, this partner of mine. I love him so much, but I just, I don't like it when he does A, B, and C. Those A, B, and Cs are exactly what Jax does. Yeah. That, that is definitely part of what blew my mind. And then the, as the conversation goes further and as I'm like thinking about this, like the difference is, is Max in this scenario is a real human being that uh, this person we're talking about, this this hypothetical 
is having to deal with on a daily basis, right? So they see Max's highs and lows, but like most things, the negatives are what stick with you. The negatives are the things, the thorn in your foot, all of that sort of, the rock in your shoe. Right. Now, Jax has done all of these things, has done terrible things, but Jax also knows that he's on a reality television show. And... yeah. I'm not sure this hypothetical person is thinking this all the way through into the sense that like you could hate Jax even more if you go, he knows he's trying to make a TV show and does it anyway. So that's even more frustrating. That's even more whatever. But they're mainly pointing out like this is what and I'm just making sure I'm getting your story straight here, Craig. They're saying these are things I see in my day-to-day -day life and they're getting recounted on this person who's making probably a lot more money than Max and is almost being celebrated for it because up until recently is brought back season after season after season and repeating the exact same behavior and getting married, having a child, you know, continually dating, you know, be having this cool job in West Hollywood, you know, all of that sort of stuff, being able to buy a house, like essentially saying this behavior is rewarded. But is that in defense of Jax? Where do we take it from there? Right. Yeah, I think the house thing is an interesting uh update to point out i mean he bought a house people like to point out well he has a million dollars in tax liens against him <laughs> okay I'll, I'll i'll entertain that for a second but if he did i don't think a bank would give yeah. him a loan i don't know i don't sure, want to get sure, into sure. what about is but that's but people are constantly nitpicking like yeah he's married and has a kid but he brought britney out from las vegas to be his girlfriend it's like well hold on, you've never traveled to visit a, a new boyfriend and got all excited because you get to go to some new sure. place? I know I have. And so if we if we look at some of them, I think we have to look at all of them. And so little things like, oh, he drank too much on the weekend, that's just, that's that's a common complaint, I think, that they see it in Jax and they go, oh, I don't like that. And they transfer their hate onto Jax because he's there on the television and it keeps them from having to hate their partner. Oh, Interesting. Yeah, we do that kind of thing all the time, I think, when we can. And that's why reality TV is so sizzling and tantalizing is because it gives us that ability to transfer ourselves onto the person that we're watching. It's why The Bachelor, for instance, I think is so successful is because they pick relatable people to be the leads. Mm, I do believe I, I agree with you there. I also feel like they always try and embarrass their leads on The Bachelor. And I think that that also happens on Vanderpump Rules. Like, it's more about embarrassing the cast and seeing, or attempting to embarrass people and seeing how they maneuver around it. Well, sure. It, it's to bring out those qualities. Okay. I mean, if we just watched, if we just watched people sitting around like Big Brother, I don't know if we'd have the same transference to use a phrase that we would have if we we're watching the bachelor of Vanderpump rules where we put them in these pressure cookers and we expect their thoughts and feelings to come out. That's why bachelor in paradise is so, <laughs> so great is because we put them in this pressure cooker for two weeks and we say, you know what? I relate to that. But what, what's real, but you know, what happens is we say, I relate to that because my partner does it. That's my working theory at least. And it allows us to not like what we see on the TV, but like what's sitting next to us on the couch watching the TV. It gives us that that ability to move those feelings away from the person that we love the most. Would you say then that like Jax knows what he's doing? Do you think this is like all intentional? Well, there's a long debate. I I, I think about it from time to time. I think the the uh, other maybe the other podcasts out there on the Vanderpump Rules think about this too. Is is like is Jax capable of p pulling off a big <laughs> heist like he has done where he's captured America's, <laughs> you know, psyche. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But he's, you know, he's, he's making us watch him after all of these years. Did, was this his plan all along? Is he capable of, of developing that kind of plan? I don't know. I don't like to call people smart sure. or not smart or things like that. I, I don't know. He, he, he seems perfectly capable of it yeah. to me.
Wow, Craig. Is that why you've never <laughs> called me smart? <laughs> I think you're more than capable of being smart, Rob. Oh, thank you. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I was just thinking, you know, uh, when we watched, recapped uh, Winter House, I just watched season one of Vanderpump Rules again because it was on. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the marathon. The marathon. <laughs> and thinking about that and thinking about what we just heard, the clip we just heard. I think Jax is more than capable of pulling off the heist yeah. and making us all think that, you know, one, whatever he wants us to think, because he is so good at what he does. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that first season is amazing. Yeah. And <laughs> he's got a lot of practice, you know. Yeah. But the point is, is that, like, are we defending Jax? And then where does... What and what does defending mean? Like, are we defending the actions? Maybe not so much, but are we defending his reason of being because of his job? You know? See, I sort of think I defend his actions. Wow. Just as much as anything else. I mean, like I said on the clip, who hasn't gone to Vegas and tried to hook up, right? Or... Sure. Who hasn't traveled to to visit somebody that they they're dating or you know it's like it's like and even even on that first season so okay he lies to Stasi about hooking up with somebody in Vegas I think that's the premise of the first season right yeah and then eventually he cops to it after talking to a therapist and <laughs> and whatnot I mean I think I think that's on all camera pretty pretty natural for a for a dude his age. And a uh, drug addict and, uh, yeah. you know, someone yeah, I mean, who's not, who's still searching for who he is. Right. You know, he's probably not thinking all that clearly, uh, like you said, because of, you know, substance abuse or something like that. And he's used to getting his way and um, he, he, he has met his match with Stasi, right, yeah. as, a, as a partner, which he's not used to. And we saw that uh, come out when he then dates... What's her name? Laura Lee. <laughs> Laura Lee, yeah. So who, who he doesn't respect and doesn't think is like all that compatible with him. And so he he kind of treats her poorly. So, um, you know, there's a lot of factors going into that first season. that, But I think he's still, he's you know, he's still making himself the, the lead. He, he's still doing the things that are necessary to be the lead. So here's the thing. You're kind of coming around on what I said originally, defending his actions or defending what he does because of his job. And I think the blurred line here is that we aren't saying what we think he's doing is good or okay. It's that like for his job and his position in the life that he had, the bed he's made for himself, the decisions he makes are understandable. Right. And you're saying that the at home listener or viewer is frustrated because someone in their life could potentially be making the same decisions Jax is making, but doesn't have a TV show. Right. Yeah. I think that's exactly what I'm saying. And I think, you know, we, I think we, I don't want to put words in everyone's mouth. I don't want to say everyone, but I think a lot of people have done what Jax does or been, been in Stasi's shoes or been in Jax's shoes. And this theory only extends so far as the, the female in Nebraska with the male partner named Max. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And well, all these things that Max does that we don't like, you know, we that transference of hate onto Jax because Jax is doing the things, that, you know, it's like, like, I, I feel that, um, you know, it's all it's all relatable because we do, we do tacitly approve of his actions because we are with people that do those same actions. Mm. Okay. You haven't sold me completely, but I get where you're coming from. Okay, Rob, I think you and me need to go to Vegas this weekend. <laughs> okay, hey, I'm I'm closer than you are. Yeah, you're halfway there. <laughs> yeah. Don't dox me. Uh, <laughs> Craig, I think that's that's good. If everyone wants to hear a more in-depth conversation, it's behind the paywall. Check it out. One of the yeah. funnest episodes I've done over oh, there. Thanks, Rob. But fun comes in many forms. Craig, mm -hmm. 
much like my one of my most recent Patreon episodes is with a New York stand-up comic named Stuart Fullerton, who during lockdown used to do a weekly live show on YouTube with Peter, Whoa. if you can believe it. Stuart's hilarious. Stuart was a great guest, loves all things Vanderpump, has a lot of strong opinions, but we decided to take a look at the many times comedy has been brought up as like a storyline. Uh, it's all well and good, but I just wanted to share a clip from that episode. Here right. we go. I think Kristen and Stassi were talking before Kristen did her stand up. <laughs> yeah. She goes, she goes, I had to be a ratchet Vegas chick. So of course I had to talk to Sheena. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is hilarious. It's like uh, a, such a backhanded comp. It's like, it's, I it know. feels like Kristen heard somewhere that insult comedy is the highest praise you could give someone. And so she's like, oh, great. A perfect excuse to insult, but also insult. show myself as being hilarious on camera. It's so funny. Okay. I, I, I mean, we have to get started. Like, what, yeah. are, what, what should we talk about first? Okay. So. I, I just want to go chronologically here. Okay. okay. So in, in season three, we early on, we get the diary show, which is when Ariana and Tom Sandoval go up and share readings from their like middle school days from their <sighs> diaries, maybe even high school, whatever makes the best diary entry. And first of all, listeners, I did not require Stuart to go back and watch all of these episodes. So it's not, we're not going to be crystal clear on everything here. But honestly, I think this was actually season four, early on. It's four. It's season yeah, four. Season four, early I on. I did watch everything. I okay. watched all the stand ups parts. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. So we'll start with Tom. Tom, I think, is a little bit more forgiving because it's post 9 11. He's in a band, he's trying to be like a rap rocker. And he's got rhymes that are like against the government and the Bush regime. And yeah, it is it is not comfortable, but it's so cringe. You can just see like how he has grown from there, always wanting to be a performer and feeling like he's got some I am aware of it vibe to him. I agree. Okay, so first of all, I agree. I think Tom always has has self-awareness with some things until he goes completely off the rails. Yes. I will say, first things first, this diary type of show, I have done so many of these, and they're always, like, the worst shows ever. <laughs> like, it's... People try to do this theme to have, like, a spin on something, yep. and, then, and then no one even does it, and then it's like... I've done so many shows like this, like, when I started comedy. Uh -huh. They never go well. They're never that funny. It's not that funny to read a diary. I've literally nope. seen shows like this so many times. Same. And I've seen shows like this in like Kansas. You I know. know. So I know. It, it, it's like, hey, a new spin on an old favorite of comedy. But what really jumped out to me is that like, it's like when you're trying to tell someone about your really weird dream. You know, like it doesn't mean anything to anyone else, but they you. don't know what spot of your life you were in when you yeah. wrote that. Like Tom was making fun of himself for sure. However, I was, this is this part, watching this part was when I realized that like these people aren't like lol friend, like funny friends. Mm -hmm. Um, but Tom singing the lyrics. Did you watch it recently? <laughs> oh yes. He's saying his lyrics. And I was like, Tom, if you were funny, just reading them dramatically would have been so much funnier. But then yep. he was like embarrassed. So then he was doing, and that's the thing. It's like, it's so funny that these people are embarrassed of anything because mm -hmm. I've seen them do the most insane. They, they normally are so not embarrassed. Like they're naked all the time. They rage. They don't care. They don't, they don't apologize. They steal things. They ruin things. Like they're They'll not embarrassed. They cry in videos and text them to people. But they're like so afraid of like six, like they're so afraid of committing to anything. That's, That's like it. really what it is. And so he is so afraid to just commit to this like bit. And so we had to sing it to make it fun. And I was just thinking, I'm like, oh my God, this would have been so much funnier if you just, because Tom has comic time. They have comic timing. They do yes. confessionals. Confessionals yes. I've always said are funnier than any stand up set ever. Absolutely. They have timing. So I don't know why he went with the singing and didn't. Ariana <laughs> was dark.
And that's where I'm cutting it off because, I don't know, I think people might want to go listen to that episode. Right. I like how you went after Kansas. That had me cracking up. (laughs) Kansas is famously next to Nebraska. Yes, and that's who you like to go after. (laughs) Between you and me, we have those states covered. You both make good points about how, you know, these are people that are, that are in a, in a sense part of a comedy esque TV show. So why doesn't that translate to being part of a comedy show? Yeah, and the conversation goes on further. You know, we like it's what I talk about in that clip and a little bit more in that episode. Being afraid to fail. You know, like if I just can show up and be myself, then I don't have to prepare for anything. But if I actually prepare for something and it fails then it's like, I am no good. And I talk about how like the brief instance where I tried to do stand up, and I can 100% understand it. Like, did I actively work on a tight five? No, I would like jot down a couple of funny things, do an open mic, and it wouldn't go well. And that's my own fault. And that's what these people are doing. That's why like, I think... So many of them fall into like a t-shirt line or a blog or something like this because it's so much easier to think of a phrase and put it on a shirt and then sell it than to actively have to be, I don't know, thoughtful or creative and potentially fail. You know, if someone doesn't buy a shirt, well, you don't buy shirts every single day. But if you put yourself on stage, then it's like, I actively don't like you. Yeah, all really good points, Rob. You know, I'm certainly guilty myself of taking the easy route on things. And, you know, that's probably why I'm not a stand up comic. Well, first of all, I'm not funny, but second, uh, I don't know. I, I find you pretty funny. It takes like really hard work to do that. And, yeah. and, and the kind of hard work that I'm not good at, which is, you know, sitting down and typing stuff out and reading it back and, you know, all that kind of stuff that, that it requires that I'm not just not good at. And you put that in the context of, Tom and Tom taking mushrooms in, in order to figure out the business model yeah. for Schwartz and Sandy's the restaurant. Oh my God. That's exactly it. That is 100% <laughs> it. Like we can't just do it on our own. We have to be creative. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, all really good. Um, you know, it, it's been fun going down memory lane here. Memory lane. And, uh, you know, going through all your awesome Patreon content. Well, thank you. And that's, that's just a drop in the bucket of all of the other things that we can get, you know, here's my, my real quick pitch. And then I want to hear a little bit more about bachelor masters. (laughs) Um, not only do you get like bonus episodes, like the ones you've heard clips from here, the listeners get ad free and early access to episodes. So You don't have to skip through a Kenan Thompson commercial or any other weird slew of things that are trying to be sold. Um, You also get access to my Discord. You get video content when I put that up. A lot of times I like to do the thing I did for the Sonar holiday special, which was the Vanderpump Rules Book Club, where (laughs) the last couple of months I've sat in front of a camera and read a couple of chapters of... Kristen's book as well as Lala's book. And let me tell you, worth every penny of not only the Patreon, but what I've spent on these books. Uh, You're hacking Audible, the platform. Yeah. Well, I do it in a way where uh, it's legal. And yeah. also, the best part about it is when I do it live, when you can like tune in on the Discord or any other service that I'm doing it on, you can chat and like, make comments and then people talk with each other and it's a lot of fun. So there's two tiers. There's the pump teeny tier and the pasta tier. And you just (laughs) pick the one that suits you best. Craig, thanks again for joining me. Give people that quick elevator pitch to bachelor masters. again. Oh boy. Well, it's the bachelor masters around anywhere where you get your podcast, which, you know, Every podcast says that. I'm not quite sure what it means, but it is where you are looking for it. It will be there. Yes. Including Spotify. And, uh, you know, we break down what happens on the Bachelor shows in a, you know, in a sort of uh, critical studies way. We, you know, race, class, gender, you know, uh, what are, what are the motivations of the contestants? Um, are they doing the right thing? Are they doing the wrong thing morally? 
um, all these kinds of things that the show brings up that we're not just a recap podcast. So I think that gives us a little bit of a special, unique flavor. We Tastes good. Listen. Yeah, thanks. I, I enjoy that flavor. We do have t-shirts too. Wow. I don't even have those. I know. I got to get you one. Well, and I don't even have Vanderpump Rob's t-shirts. Should I make Vanderpump Rob's t-shirts? But, uh, you know, I, we haven't had any luck with that. I don't know. I don't want to speak for your podcast, but, you know, I don't know how much luck those get. But if you have shirts that you can just hand out, then people are going to be excited to get them. That's They're true. going to wear them. That's you know, true. something something special and unique. That's what we do. We have a little war chest of shirts that we hand out to people. I wonder if people would want shirts or like Vanderpump Rob's windbreakers more. Ooh, I'd yeah. take a windbreaker. Yeah. Anyway, Craig, that's going to be it for this year of Vanderpump wow. Rob's. Might that's put it. something special up on the Patreon for those who are there. But public episodes are going to resume next year. Remember, head to patreon.com slash Vanderpump Robs or listen to all the public episodes on our Sonar Network or wherever you get podcasts. Craig, it's only a few months until, uh, maybe even two months until the new season of Vanderpump Rules. Can't wait. Yeah, it's a month until The Bachelor and it's a few months or a couple months until Vanderpump Rules. It's going to be a good spring and the bachelor masters have promised that i get to come on an episode when the cast is released so yeah i'm gonna hold craig to that yeah we uh yeah we'll do that all right i'll see you later okay rob bye over and out wait rob is that who we're talking about yeah